this is the flower pot and the window question. Uh, I saw it in a textbook years ago. I always liked it. Uh, and I turned it in sort of a lab activity for like many things in my class, really, really complicated ways to measure really simple things. Uh, in the book problem, you don't know the height that this flower pot has dropped, but your window down here every day you see this flower pot go by and you get really annoyed. So you set up photo gates that tell you exactly how much time it took to go past your window, which you know the height of. And from that, you can work out how high it was dropped above and I guess go visit them or give them a piece of your mind or whatever. Uh, so to model this, I had students not drop flower pots because that gets messy and the acceleration's too fast, but roll marbles down uh, an incline, sort of like a ramp. And uh, they measured, actually they have the time to go by the window, the height of the window, and they have age. So what I had them do is use this data to try to work out, well, how high was that window? Um, I know it seems like a really silly way to measure the height of a window, but bear with me. Uh, you can do it, um, and the way you normally do this problem is you say, well, you know this distance, and you know this time, so you can use the D is VIT plus one-half AT squared equation to work out what the velocity was here, or the velocity at B. And then this velocity at B is the final velocity from when you go from A to B, so you can use the VF squared equation. So uh, if you solve for... Um, VB, because remember it starts off at zero, you get VB is 2GH. So if you rearrange this first equation and solve it for VB, you get D minus, you know, one half T squared over T equals VB. Yeah, it's getting a little messy. You plug it in for VB and you solve it for H. And you get this very much non-linear thing. I don't even know how you would linearize this because you're squaring this thing that's got a t squared on the top and a t and it's got these terms. I honestly have no idea if that can be linearized. Maybe some really mathy people out there can do it. But I do know you can graph it in Desmos. So if you go to this Desmos, right, here's the, the code, uh, you'll see that this data has been plotted for you and we're going to do a very non-linear fit. So these green dots are the data point like I'd shown in another video you just paste this in and I rename them to T for time and H for the height above the window remember we're looking for D then I fit in a function now when you're doing a fit function really what distinguishes a regular graph from a fit function is instead of equals you use tilde so I have a parameter for the acceleration a and then uh, H is the H from the table T is the T from the table and the only thing that it didn't know in this particular case was little d, which is the height of the window. And when it does its fit function, it gets uh, 0.2172 uh, meters. And uh, that's really close. They used 20 centimeters for the window, so that worked out really well. And it's also kind of fun. And what's really neat about this is even when your fit function depends on a parameter that can vary, like in this case, I'm not 100% confident that this is the acceleration. Let's see how that changes the fit. It's as simple as moving the slider bar, and that will change your fit result. And it does it so lightning quick. I have no idea how they do it, but um, I'm really glad they do. So that's how you can do a fit function pretty much no matter how messy. And I imagine the R squared is similar to R squared when you do a linear regression. Uh, I do know that if you're way, way off, uh, you can get R squared through here that is, is much, much greater than, uh, than 1 or much, or maybe it's negative, but when it looks weird, it's not a great fit. Uh, but I really love this ability to do very nonlinear uh, fits. Uh, yeah, so that's fun. Who else is having fun?